How do you not get powder all over black shit? I need like a bib when I put powder on. All right, so today we have a first impressions video, trying out almost a full face of first impressions. There were a few things that weren't, but lots of new products here to try out. I'm gonna make this intro super quick. So if you're excited for this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bay Rito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. All right, so I'm gonna start putting new things on my face and then I'll talk to you guys about the filming setup right now and background and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna try out two different primers today. A little bit extra. I'm gonna go with the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer. Probably just around my nose area, maybe on my forehead a little bit. And then on the rest of my face, I'm gonna try the Catrice Light Correcting Serum Primer in Sunlight. Nice frosted glass bottle. Ooh, that was kind of like runny. I'm gonna shake this a little bit more. Okay, I think it's actually just runny because I gave it a good shake and it's still pretty runny. So I'm gonna just apply this around my nose area. That looks like it blurred the pores a little bit. I feel like not quite as much as my Revlon pore reducing primer, but they do look slightly blurred. It says shake before use, so I'm gonna give this a really good shake. This looks a little bit like bronzy or something. That pore primer is actually absorbing in really nicely. Whoa. This looks like basically like a gold liquid bronzer. This looks very bronzy, I'm scared. But let's try it. it smells like a perfume. Whoa, it smells like a like old school Victoria's Secret body splash. That's actually, <coughs> whoa. Yeah, it's pretty scented. I'm gonna say it's actually giving though a really nice subtle glow and you don't see the color a whole lot. It feels a little bit tacky. It doesn't feel like a silicone primer. Wow, it smells so good. Usually when products smell like perfume, it's probably not a sign that you wanna put it all over your face, but even though my face is double primed right now, I'm gonna spray a setting spray underneath because I wanna try this underneath my makeup. This is the Essence Glow To Go Illuminating Setting Spray. And I just wanna see and add a little bit more moisture into my skin because it looks nice and radiant, but since I have dry skin, I usually like to add some moisture in before I put on foundation. So I'm gonna try this out. I got this on Ulta for a couple bucks. I'm just gonna do a couple spritzes, probably like 15. Oh man, that spritzer is one that goes friggin' everywhere. Literally, it's all down my arm right now. Yeah, and on my chest. Okay, so instead I'm actually going to spray some of this in my hand. Looks like it has almost like a purpley pink color to it. And I'm just gonna apply this on top. This is also heavily scented. I don't feel like that actually did a whole lot more than the Catrice. Definitely not quite as glowy as the Catrice a little purple bottle that I tried, I think in my last first impressions video. I've been using that almost every day. I love it, super glowy. This one, I wouldn't say is quite as glowy, but I might try it over my makeup too, we'll see. So to apply my foundation today, I'm gonna to try out a new sponge. This is the BH Studio Pro Perfecting Sponge, and I've already dampened this one. It actually didn't get a whole lot bigger. Oh no. Don't wanna look, don't wanna look. So for foundation, this is kind of like a first impression on their new shade. So Too Faced Born This Way foundation, they came out with a bunch of new shades. The new lightest shade is Cloud. My issue with Too Faced products generally, like concealers and foundations, they typically go so yellow. They don't really have a whole lot of neutral or pink undertones. So I think Cloud is gonna be way too light for me. I just kind of more wanna see the undertone and then I might mix it in with either the shade Pearl or snow, both of which are also kind of too yellowy. So I don't know, I'm just gonna try mixing. I haven't used this foundation in a long time, so I kind of forget what I think of it. So cloud looks pretty light. It might be a little bit hard to see on the palette, but here's cloud, pearl, and snow. I'm just uh, mixing all of these together. I feel like I might have tried this foundation once or twice when I was on Accutane, and I remember my skin just like soaked it up like it looked too matte. Might add a little bit more pearl, but I'm gonna try blending this out with a sponge first. Ooh, not a fan of the sponge. It almost feels like that one that I just tried in the Shop Miss A video. It feels a little bit too like rubbery. All right, so while we are foundationing it up, I'm actually gonna switch over to the brush. I'm not feeling the sponge at all. So almost every video I've been filming in my living room because the lighting just looked so much better. I filmed like two videos in here and the lighting and stuff just looked like horrible and the walls looked blue. The white balance was just like totally off. So I've been trying to figure out a way to film in here, but in the meantime, I've been filming in the living room with, so that's like the black wall and white couch and stuff you guys have been seeing in the background. And I really like that background, but every time I film, I have to bring out my entire setup and then put it away, which adds basically like 45 minutes essentially onto filming. And also it just makes it a little bit harder to like separate relaxation time when you're working 
in your living room. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather just have one room for YouTube and then be able to live in the rest of my house. So anyways, this morning I took an hour and got everything set up in here. And I think it looks definitely better than the last video I filmed in here. And I think that what you guys are seeing, like the amount of lighting reflecting off my face, if that makes sense, is more accurate than in the living room. It looks a bit more like dewy, my face in the living room, just the way that the light bounces off. And right now it's pretty much like half natural light, half studio lighting. So I think it just looks a bit more accurate, the finish and everything of my face and just like the colors. These are actually my closet doors behind me. So I think I might actually paint these black because that would look cool with the two black walls right here. And then this thing in the middle is like the actual wall. Let me know what you guys think of that. I think that'll look good with the green against the black, but then still having my hair be against the white and having that like contrast. But please let me know what you guys think of the lighting and everything right now. Feedback is always helpful. Constructive feedback. I just played back some of this footage to make sure I was in focus because from what I'm saying, it looks like I was kind of out of focus. And I gotta, I gotta blend in my dry shampoo, folks. <laughs> Looking a little ashy up there. So now that that's kind of setting, it's not looking the best. Definitely doesn't look as good as I remember this foundation looking when I had oily skin. So my concealers aren't gonna be a first impression today. I'm just gonna use my normal go-to concealers because I really wanna try out a new powder for my under eyes. So I just wanna see how it works using my normal concealers. And I have a couple powders actually, I'm really curious about. All right, now for my under eyes, I saw someone using this on Instagram. I believe her handle is the Haley K, she's a makeup artist, and I think she works for MAC, or she used to, but she used the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Warm Rose for her under eyes, and she said it has like a pinky tone to it and it's pretty light, so I wanted to try it out, so I just ordered this off Nordstrom. I haven't used a MAC Mineralized Skin Finish, uh, I think like since I worked at MAC. I hoping it's gonna be light enough for my skin tone, it looks like it will. We're gonna refer to this as MSF, so I don't have to say mineralized skin finish 50,000 times, but the MAC MSF powders do have a little bit of a sheen to them. Not like a total glow, but they give you a really pretty, very subtle kind of sheen. I haven't used these in a long ass time. So I'm gonna try it with my normal BH Cosmetics brush 137. It's what I usually use for my under eye powders. And I just find that firm brushes work way better for my under eyes than any kind of flimsy brush or baking or anything. It didn't seem to darken it a whole lot. I think that shade can work. Not bad, I think I would still mix in a little bit of my Machir press powder to brighten it up a little bit, but if I just want my under eyes to kind of match my face and not give like a super lifted highlighted look, then I could use this shade. You really don't see the sheen a whole lot. Like it doesn't look too glowy. I don't not like it. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more creasing than I usually do with my normal powders. I'm gonna apply this a little bit actually to my chin and my nose to see if it highlights that a little bit. Oh yeah. I might go back in with this, but first I wanna try a different powder for the rest of my face. So I wanna try the Ethereal Setting Powder, the Born This Way powder by Too Faced. I'm not sure if this is totally new, but I've never tried this. So I am gonna set my face, which I normally don't do on my forehead especially, but I don't like how this foundation is sitting on my skin anyways. So I might as well try the powder and then I'm probably gonna coat my face in some setting spray to bring it back to life. That's cute, they have like a little heart imprinted on there. This powder looks pretty yellow too. So I'm gonna start out by setting my cheek area. I don't know if this is supposed to be kind of glowy. Ethereal powder makes it seem like it kind of should be. So it's totally mattifying my skin. This doesn't look like it has a glow to me at all, but it looks a lot better actually than just the foundation side without that powder because this looks pretty matte, but it looks like shitty and matte. And now this side looks matte, but it looks a lot more smooth and almost like airbrushed from that powder. It's not a whole lot of color to this. It's almost just like a tint of color, like a wash of color. So even though it's pretty yellow, it just kind of almost blends out to be a little bit more on the translucent side. A little bit goes a long way, for sure. I'm gonna majorly warm up my face, so don't you worry. But I think I would use that powder actually if I wanted a matte finish on top of a foundation that I liked. I think on top of this foundation, it's just not looking the best, but the finish of the powder definitely helped out my overall kind of base situation right now. I'm actually gonna go back in with the MAC MSF. I'm gonna try this almost as like a highlighter in certain parts of my face just to add a little bit of radiance back in. This is the Catrice Illuminating Setting Spray I was talking about. I'm gonna douse my face in this stuff. 
I would with this, but the spritzer on this is so awful that 90% of it would just end up on my arms. This will actually be really cool to see how glowy this thing is because my face is very matte right now. Like my face is never this matte. That's what I'm talking about. Looking more like skin now. That just brought life back into my face. How do you not get powder all over black shit? I need like a bib when I put powder on. I'm gonna try this tinted brow gel by Koki. Doesn't look like it's filled up all the way. It's a pretty big one for a brow product. Like that's half my brow right there. Ooh, looks like a nice brown shade though. So I'm actually gonna use this product after I do this brow on my angled eyebrow brush and just kind of fill in certain spots. The shade is nice. This is way too big for brows. And then just use that to fill in certain areas and add some shape. Whoa, dries down definitely. I just went and took a spoolie and tried to like comb through. It dries pretty quickly. Brows are having issues today. <laughs> it is what it is. Priming my eyes with my usual MAC paint pot. This is in the shade Soft Ochre. So the blush I'm gonna be trying is glowy and also I'm gonna put on a highlight. So I wanna use a matte bronzer. I don't have a new one to try, so I'm just gonna go with my MUA Bronze Perfection and use this and then we'll go in with the glowy blush and things. Love this bronzer so much. So I'm gonna try the Wet n Wild Don't Flutter Yourself blush. I picked this up in San Diego last time I was there at CVS and I showed it in a vlog. I did like a little CVS haul. I'm actually gonna be, I think I'll be in San Diego when you guys are seeing this video. Yeah, holy crap. Wet n Wild has some of the hardest friggin' products to get open, I swear. This is ridiculous. Wow, there's an actual hummingbird imprinted on here. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Look at that. Fancy Wet n Wild. I love glowy blushes. I love pink blushes. So I have high hopes for this. Oh, wow. That is very glowy. Looks kind of like a highlight. Like, I could totally use that as just a highlight. It's a little bit too glowy to be a blush. I'm just gonna add the Physicians Formula Butter Blush in Vintage Rouge. Everything just turns into a tornado when I film. For a highlight, I am very excited to try this. This is the Glam Glow Glow Powder. It says it has hyaluronic acid in it. They have a little hole right here. Feels so nice. It's like that really soft, rubbery. It's like those phone cases that are super soft. Ooh, oh my gosh, this packaging. I just got like a packaging gasm. Wow. So you get three shades in here. Looks like this white has a little bit of pink purple in it, but that that looks pretty. Ooh, that one looks pretty. It actually looks like kind of a lighter gold. Oh, that could be really pretty. I might use that middle shade. It actually looks lighter on the face. Definitely looks lighter on the face than in the pan. Does this smell like vanilla or am I imagining that? Oh my gosh, it totally smells like vanilla. But then you also kind of smell the rubber case. Applying it to your face though, you actually get a good whiff of vanilla in there. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm gonna apply whatever's left over to the middle of my brow to add a little bit more glow to my forehead. Nothing crazy, I'm just using literally whatever is still on the brush. Okay, I think we are ready to move on to eyeshadow. So I'm gonna try out the new Kathleen Lights Zodiac palette. She did this in collaboration with ColourPop. That girl just cranks them out with ColourPop. You go, Kathleen. It's a soft, dark blue and rose gold kind of foiled palette. Here are the colors in this palette if you haven't seen it yet. I'm a Gemini, so I have this gold shade right here. I've done a birth chart thing. I forget what like the official name is. I think it's a birth chart. And whatever my moon sign was, now I don't remember exactly what it was, but whatever my moon sign was, was like spot on Gemini, my sun rising, sun sign. I'm not at all. But I guess your moon sign is supposed to be like your true self or like how, I think how you view yourself. So I guess that would make sense that I identify with my moon sign more. So I'm just taking the shade Taurus and blending that into my crease. She also came out with some cream shadows or the supernova shadows. And there's this one like yellow goldy one, which is really appealing to me. Or there's this one, which is kind of more bronzy. This is in the shade Constellation. So I wanna use one of these. I think I wanna use my shade, the Gemini one, and the yellow gold, and then some of the just brown shades, brown matte shades in here, maybe the purple. Hopefully it won't look like a laker. I'm gonna start off by taking Virgo, which is a really cool toned brown. I'm just gonna apply that to like my outer third of my eye. Blending this up into the crease slightly, but I don't wanna blend it up too far. And I'm doing this in kind of like a slanted shape. I'm gonna blend out those edges. Now on my finger, I'm gonna take the gold shade Gemini that felt so soft and I'm gonna apply this on like the inner half, bringing it into that brown shade and then I'll go and blend afterwards. 
This feels very soft. Ooh, that's a pretty gold. Okay, without anything on it, I'm just gonna go back with that same brush that I used for the brown. There's probably a little bit of brown left on here. So I'm just gonna blend those two shades together a bit. I'm gonna go back with that first shade, Taurus, the warmer brown on that same brush and just add a little bit more into the crease and bring it in a bit farther, just right above that gold. I feel like this gold shade is pretty enough on its own, but I'm really curious about this. So I'm gonna top it off with this. This is in the shade Astrology. It kind of removes itself if you tap it while it's still wet. So I'm gonna kind of wait for it to dry down a little bit and then go into any areas I missed. So I'm gonna bring, uh oh, I just brought that too far. So I'm gonna have to go back in with the brown for sure and blend some more. My eyes are burning a little bit. I haven't tried these in a while. I used it when it first launched, but my eyes are burning a little bit. I have super sensitive eyes. While that's still wet, I'm just taking my finger to kind of tap out the end where it meets that brown. Okay, I think the key with these is that you have to just do, like get it all covered on the first go. If you try and go back in and touch it, that's where it kind of removes it. So just get it all down there on the first go if you can. I'm gonna go back in with the Cool Tone Brown shade Virgo and apply a little bit more and blend into that gold again. Just kind of repeating exactly what I did before. So I think I wanna use some of these purples. This might look to LA Lakers, but that's okay. I think I'm gonna go in with this shade on my lower lash line. So I'm just gonna add some black liner to my waterline. I'm gonna add a little bit below my lash line too, and then I'm gonna blend it out with that purple shade. So on a flat edge brush, I'm gonna take the shade Sagittarius. Whoa, that was really powdery. Wasn't expecting that. Whoops, I kind of dug my brush in there. So I'm gonna press that purple into my lower lash line. To blend that out, I'm gonna take Scorpio. Even though it has a little bit of shimmer, it looks like it's a little bit lighter. So I think it'll work just to kind of blend those two together and blend out that purple. Ooh, that purple's pretty. Ooh, yeah, I like that purple shade. I'm gonna use the middle kind of goldy shade that I used on my face. I'm gonna use this as an inner corner highlight too. I brought that purple pretty far in, so I'm kind of just diffusing that a little bit by blending that gold shade into it, just making it look a little bit softer. So before I go in for liner and lashes and all that good stuff, I'm gonna give my face another spritz of setting spray. Going in with setting spray number three today. Wow, how many primers and setting sprays do I have on my face right now? This is the new ColourPop All-Star Setting Spray. I'm not sure if this is what kind of finish this has, if it's matte or more dewy or anything. So let's just give it a go. I like the packaging, super pretty, like almost neon melon color. That mister went all over my body too. Yeah, the mister is pretty thick. You almost get like dots on your face with this one. So you probably would need to change the top or maybe I just got a dud, but I'm gonna go back over with my Catrice one to even everything out. Never have too much setting spray, you know? It's not one of those things that the more you add, like the cakier makeup looks, it usually looks better the more you add. Never gone setting spray overboard. Trying out a new liner today. So this is the new Fenty uh, Fly Liner. Ooh, a nice rose gold. Is this rose gold or am I just, yeah, it's a little bit rose gold. Pretty packaging and it has that triangle shape so it's really easy to grip. I actually can't tell if this is a felt or like a brush tip right now. Let's see how this does. The brush is pretty flimsy. It's not quite as stiff as my Physicians Formula Eye Booster, which in my opinion makes it a little bit easier when the brush is a little bit stiffer because it's easier to control. Like this is very flimsy. Yeah, ooh, that was not my best wing. This is pretty hard to create like a fine wing with this one because of how flimsy the top is. Eh. Oh man, that was bad, that was bad. Positions formula to the rescue. Feels pretty wet too, so I don't wanna look up yet, but I'm gonna need to go in with my physician's formula to attempt to fix that. That just got really thick, really quick. All right, those wings just quickly uh, went downhill. <laughs> Definitely would not use that fly liner again. Way too difficult to work with for me personally. Yeah, my eyeliner looks pretty janky today, but it's like the more I add, the worse it's getting, so we're just gonna stop. So I actually wanted to try a couple new mascara products before I go in with falsies just to see how they are. So first I'm gonna try the Catrice Glamandol Volumizing Mascara Primer. I love the Glamandol Mascara for layering with my Too Faced Better Than Sex. And then over the primer, I'm gonna try the new Hourglass Caution Mascara. This actually doesn't have a curved 
wand like the normal Glamandol does. I used to always use the MAC Prep and Prime and I think I just ran out of it one time and like never repurchased it for some reason. But I felt like that actually really helped my lashes so maybe I should repurchase that. This one feels a lot more kind of like lightweight than the MAC one and you can't really see it going on as much. All right, now let's try out the Caution Mascara. This packaging feels so nice and heavy. Whoa, very stiff one and kind of just basic. So you can't really see my lashes probably because of the massive amount of liquid eyeliner I have on right now. So I'm gonna try and kind of like turn to the side, maybe you can see it there more. This one looks pretty lengthening, but definitely pretty natural. Doesn't look bad, it just isn't as much volume as I like. So maybe that would be a layering one for me. So I was gonna go in with the Ardell Faux Mink 812s, but now that I'm seeing my liner situation, I might need to use a little bit more dramatic ones. All right, so my lashes are on. I ended up going in with my Eyelore 121s because I needed, whoa, my throat. <laughs> I needed a little bit more going on up there. So for lips today, I wanna try out the new Too Faced Melted Metallic Liquefied Metallic Matte Lipstick. So it's a metallic, matte lipstick. So this kind of pinky nude one is Sugar Kisses and this one is You Better Work. I might first go in with this one and then add a little bit of the pink one in the center. Mmm, smells so good. It smells like vanilla. Ooh, that has a pretty amount of metallic to it. It looks like a very wearable metallic. I don't find myself reaching for metallic lipsticks ever. I just don't find them to be that wearable. So this definitely looks like a wearable amount of metallic. It almost just looks more like a sheen. That shade and just the formula of that and everything, I really like. I am gonna add a little bit of the shade on top just cause I'm curious. Just using my finger to blend out those edges. I'm so tempted to just get scissors and like chop off this one part of lash right now. All right, so this is the finished look. I have a few standout things. I feel like I had more things that I didn't care for in this video than things that like really stand out. But my few standouts I would say are the Catrice Light Correcting Serum Primer. I would definitely use this again. Just on no makeup makeup kind of days too, just to get that glow. I like that it didn't leave like a really greasy kind of feel. It does soak in, almost gives you a tacky feel, which I like, because I feel like my makeup just like sticks to it a little bit better. I would use this again, just as more of a highlight shade, like a pinky highlight. This I'm really excited about, between the packaging and then the product and everything. I like the glow that it gave. It looks pretty on the inner corner. Packaging is an A+. And then the MAC powder, I would definitely try again and just try it as like an all over face powder too. This looked pretty good for being a loose powder on my skin. A lot of loose powders look totally tragic. So this looked pretty good considering I don't like my overall base right now. Like there's no way I would use that foundation again with this powder. I probably wouldn't use the Too Faced Born this way again. On my dry skin, it just, it did not look good. So this I might try if I want a matte finish. Like I said, I don't really go for matte finishes anymore, but if I wanted a matte finish, I would try this over a foundation combo that I liked better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. I always link everything down below in the description box, all the products I used on my face, along with nail polish, shade, dress, whatever else is on my face. Don't forget to also let me know what you think of the lighting in the background and if I should paint those two things black. I have a first impressions playlist too, so if you wanna go back and watch any other first impressions, you can. I will link that playlist down below as well. But I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.